When a man makes money, he thinks, how can I provide for my family and my wife? When a woman makes money, she thinks I don't need a man. I don't believe in that thinking. Rola Diab, entrepreneur, speaker, and performance specialist. Helping businesses and executives accelerate operational performance. There's information that we can tap into. And when we tap into that information, synchronicities happen. Can you explain to me Breaking Cinderella? The idea is to cultivate and create the power internally. The stories we have mm -hmm. from our mastermind groups are insane. One girl came in. See this guy there? He's depressed. Just life doesn't seem amazing. Life doesn't seem exciting. It's hard for him to be grateful. What do you have to say to him? I would start with... To all the people that say I don't have enough women on the podcast. <laughs> oh, sorry. Do you identify as a woman? I do. Oh, today, good. as sorry. of today, yes. Sorry accurate. that I um, pre uh, prejudged your pronouns. Good assessment. You're yeah, prejudge your pronouns. P J P. <laughs> Rola, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Rola. Hi, Brad. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Um, you've been in Dubai for just a little bit. You know, that conversation keeps coming up because I've done so much while being here. I have been in Dubai more than the United States this year. Okay, so you're starting... But not officially living. I just made the move this summer. So you're starting to make the transition. I made the transition. So, well, you were doing the transition. Now you've completely transitioned yeah, from yeah, male I've to female. Yeah, yeah, I've been here now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, we're all good now. <laughs> all set. I told you this is not a serious podcast. Oh, I know, I got I told that. you. You've been going around doing your podcast with other people and it's all right. serious. Right, I and sense they sit jealousy. There, they sit there with a clipboard. <laughs> I am jealous. I thought so. You should have been on my podcast I only. I know, well, the, whose fault is this? True. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah. We don't have to go there. No, we're going to have our first fight. <laughs> In front, on the camera. <laughs> um... This is a mirror, by the way, if you ever oh, need it. Just thought I'd let you know. <clears throat> How are we doing? Oh, a little. She's got a little cute little baby hair. Yeah, I got out. cut a little short. It's kind it's of okay. cute. I said to her, we'll but she'll, she's a little bit conscious about it. It's okay. <laughs> um, we can actually make the video not HD, so they won't see it. Oh, amazing! Right? That's we good. can actually blur the face. You should have said this from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so, why are you wearing a wedding ring on your ring finger? It's not a wedding ring. It's just a ring. On your ring finger? On your wedding Just finger? Just because it fits, those, these two rings fit those fingers. So. Is, it a way, it is it a way of detracting men? <laughs> no, I just like the ring on that finger, honestly. But do you go out and do, has that, have you ever done that? Detracted men because I've had a wedding, I've had someone, actually I was out in, in Miami once and I had a really like a ring with a big rock on it. And I took it off because it was bothering me. <laughs> And I remember this guy that had met me, he's like, so you're married and you took your ring off. And I was like, no, it's not that kind of ring. I was like, I promise I'm not married. Uh -huh. He thought I was trying to be like, you know, <clears throat> mischievous. Mischievous. Yeah. Promiscuous. Yeah, whatever that is. Um, but you're not a promiscuous kind of girl. No, but we don't really have to have those types of Far conversations, from it. do we? Far from <laughs> okay. it. We could talk about anything. I know, but you know. You're a very respectful woman. <laughs> I like to think so. Right. Uh, very clean cut. You would okay. actually be the perfect candidate for a king to marry. Wow, a king. I'd imagine if you ate your banana, you would eat it with a knife and fork. No, I definitely don't. <laughs> I don't even think the king would, to be fair. <laughs> well, he would in front of delegates. Okay, well, I don't think they present bananas in front of delegates. But have you seen the videos where they're like... Yes, eating a banana course. with yeah, the thing. Yeah. You cut it and then you yeah, kind of yeah. slice it up. You yeah, know? I've seen all the etiquette videos. Yeah, and have you seen how banana, uh, how uh, monkeys eat bananas? I mean, I want to say yes, but I can't recall. I couldn't tell you right they now. They break it in half. Yeah. They don't peel it. They right, break right. it in yeah, half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad we're covering these important topics. <laughs> They're so stupid. <laughs> you want to cover important topics? I'm open. Let's talk about us. Oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's an important topic to me. Oh boy. Uh, okay, so who are you? If somebody's watching this and they don't know who you are, who are you? What do you do? What do you specialize in? From a career perspective, yes? Yeah. Well, what else perspective do you specialize I... in? <laughs> Just checking. What else does she specialize in outside of Korea? <laughs> well, I could have special hobbies or, you know. She's a dancer. Right. So I... Miami. No. I work with uh, various different types of businesses on high performance. So everything from working with their sales teams to presenting skills, operations, how to run meetings. Everything from behavioral... Heavy in the behavioral science space. So working at a deeper level on mindset and creating intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic and getting them to show up in a way that makes them uh, perform at a higher level. Hmm. Have you watched Suits? No Suits. Billions. <clears throat> yeah, Suits. Billionaires. Billi- billions. billions. I get, I, everybody always tells me What's that her name? Wendy. Wendy. Wendy Rhodes. Yeah, Wendy yes. Rhodes. Yes. That's, my crush. That's, After oh, you. really? After you. Oh, interesting. Oh, my crush. Yeah. She, I I actually tell people now, it's like, if you've seen billions, that's part of what I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I just imagined that as soon as you said that. Yeah. Um, but she does some freaky shit on the weekends with that's, her husband. You know. That's a bit weird. We won't go down that road. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I actually didn't fall. I, yes, actually, no, I did see that far. Oh, you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what's her husband's name? I don't remember. I only remember her. How are they together? I don't know. <laughs> Very strange couple. Right? Yeah. And she makes more money than him. She does. Hypergamy doesn't power exist. Couple. Hypergamy. But he, power couple, for sure. Does hypergamy exist? Does it exist? Let's say we're going to get married. Would you marry me if... I just want you to imagine us getting married. Okay. Would you marry me if I made less money than you? I have dated people that made less money than me. So... That's as, a yes. <laughs> I'll call my mom right now. So at this point in my career, I want to be with someone that's incredibly driven and focused on whatever their passion is. That's really important to me. And that can have deeper conversations around things that are, you know, interesting, that affect the world. Like I like to have, you know, non-superficial connections. Mm. So that's more important than, you know, a lot of other things that people put a lot of emphasis on Mm -hmm. for me. Answer the question. (laughs) You know, you just don't know who you're going to end up with that's the right fit. So I don't want to say no, because let's say I was making 50 million a year and he made 40. Am I going to be like, no, you make less money than me? That's he makes 75,000 a year working for whatever company. Nine to five accountants. No, I mean, come on. With values and you know lifestyle, all those things are important. Mm, keyword lifestyle. Yeah, no, I mean how you live your life. I'm, I live my life in a way I've created my life to be, where I have a lot of anonymity. I, I control my schedule. I, I have a lot of freedom, and I would want my partner to be able to control his schedule from that perspective, where someone else doesn't own them. Yes, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Somebody doesn't own them. Wow. Mm-hmm. But you own him. <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> could you date a guy that made millions but was a nine to five? I mean, I, yeah, I'm not going to say no to that. There's, there's, there's a lot of factors. Like, it's not like you can't take one lane and say this is the one lane. And based on, however, thousands of other factors, we're going to base the entire decision on that. Like, that's not realistic. If anyone who, who's ever dated and is out in the world looking for their partner, there are so many things that need to line up if you're going to commit to a lifelong partnership. I agree. I agree. I just said that because you said somebody owning them. So I thought, is there a blanket rule of no nine to fives? I think the, the idea is having a sense of independence and freedom that they're, they're, they have to be really happy with what they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. Like often what you see in, um, no, you know, I don't, I don't want to go down that road. I'm going to leave that one. 
Why? What are you going to say? We no, can cut it out later. No, no, no. We can cut it out later. Uh-uh, no, I don't trust you. No, this. <laughs> no, I don't trust you. What? No, no. We can cut it out. I don't, I, no. So. Say it. Why are we so focused on my dating life? We will get there. We've only been doing this for nine minutes. <laughs> okay. Wow, this whole nine minutes on my dating life. Yeah, the half of it was Tupac. Uh, no. <laughs> so anyway, as far as a relationship goes, I think there are so many answer. different... There are so many different factors to consider that unless they have to line up with your values first and foremost. If you don't share the same values, and I've made that mistake before, it's only a matter of time. You're going to, it's going to be a short lived relationship. Mm -hmm. You've really got to establish that up front. Do you share the same values? Mm -hmm. And if you haven't gone deep into that conversation, then you don't know that this relationship can work. And then Something that's really important is looking at need psychology, how they meet their needs and how you meet your needs. You, we both have top two drivers of our life. Those two top, top two needs, if you don't match at least one of your top two needs with your partner, you're gonna be growing apart. Wow, At two. least one, and ideally two, because if one changes over time, at least you have the first one. You sure that's, is that, is that like study? This is in psychology. So two, two's not enough. I feel like you need more. So here's the thing. We all have all the same needs, but we have two drivers that are our top two needs. Okay. Those drivers decide the direction of your life. Those two drivers between those two need to match your partners or else you're not going down the same road. Do you need to be clear and know what your drivers yes, are? Yes, absolutely. Because how are you going to establish that Tell me conversation? some of your drivers. So my top two needs are, vari- well, let me tell you what they are first of all. Certainty variety, love and connection, significance, and the two spiritual needs are growth and contribution. Mm -hmm. I have a high variety need, and it kind of is between variety and growth, but that's a high need for me, Mm -hmm. and then love and connection. Typically, Mm -hmm. women have love and connection with one or two. Mm -hmm. Men, testosterone-driven need, significance tends to be high, unless Mm -hmm. they're more evolved and they've moved past that. Mm -hmm. Really evolved, you move into the spiritual, more evolved than the significance would be love and connection. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> you would be open to dating a guy that doesn't have a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I want to go back to your profession, what you specialize in, okay. right? You know, I, 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 uh, I'm forgetting his surname, but his name is Naval. Um, I saw him on a podcast. I can't remember whose podcast, but he basically said, you know, when I do meetings with my, with my company in Australia, I'm always the last person to give my opinion. Mm. Because if I'm the first person to give my opinion, then You'll I know, yeah. then I know, well, I know the people that are going to yeah. try to kiss ass, they're going to say, yeah, I agree. With totally. Laura. So I want everyone's opinion and then yes. make a decision afterwards. Um, but he said in a podcast, because he specialized in this, he said 90% of meetings are just a waste of time. Yeah, because they're not stru- structured properly. Mm. Yeah, they need to be structured in a way that are action oriented. And one of the biggest challenges I've seen with corporations, and it's consistent with the biggest names in the world that you've ever heard of, they've got these problems. And if they could just go in and take the time to fix them, they would, their revenue would increase. But it's not an easy thing to do. And that's eliminating the silos between departments, the communication that happens. The breakdown in communication in a company really negatively affects them. But unfortunately, as they're building, they move very quickly and then they miss those operational processes that are, that need to be in place Mm -hmm. to ensure that they're going to not have those issues. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's one of the biggest challenges that you see is is how are they communicating? Look, I have a program launching actually and it's all about effective communication, internal and external because that helps elevate and accelerate your career. I've seen it in my own career. And um, they they have these meetings that have no proper structure. So if you go in with a proper structure and a timeline and people that are, are watching the clock, so somebody's in charge of the time, right, to really have respect for everybody in that room, and to also to identify when you're going on a tangent, right? So if, because that happens, and especially here, because we love to talk about like life, right? 
So it's important to have someone have a way of interrupting those tangents and it be part of the process, right? So you build in all these um, things that are going to support an, a productive meeting. But again, most companies don't do that. Mm. Have you ever seen a company that is just working perfectly? I've never. I've never seen perfectly, a company. Perfectly, no. Quite efficiently, yes. Yeah, but not perfect. No, no companies. I mean, because no you're company. ever evolving. As you're growing, yeah. now you have to iterate again and yeah. again because you you have to apply different. You know, if you're growing, you're never going to be perfect. I feel like the issue always comes down to this leader of the company because yeah. as a leader, you kind of develop an ego, and you want everyone to know. And well, I mean, that's some leaders. Yeah. But and they typically make decisions based on their ego rather than the benefit of the company. There is a lot of that. You know, you have really amazing leaders that don't do that, which God bless them, they really do an incredible job. But yes, often you see that. And unfortunately, we're all ego driven. It's just having the awareness to identify that's my ego, not versus not me showing up for the business or the company and the good of all the people. So there's a really great study that was done and it was over the course of 10 years where they looked at the greatest companies in the US, like everybody from Google, Patagonia, Whole Foods, Toyota. And they did the study to identify the leadership and how they were performing conscious leadership style. Mm -hmm. Over the course of 10 years, the results came back with a 40% overall well-being, increase in well-being based on that type of leadership for the company, that's huge. 25% um, productivity, also really positive numbers. And this number is the wildest, 1,025% stakeholder value. Oh, wow. Incredible results. Now, if, if the heads of these businesses understood that, they're gonna spend extra money, invest in time and, and effort to implement these types of, of ways of being in their leadership, but it's getting missed. I think because it's at a high level, it sounds nice, but no, the results show there's a lot of benefit to running your, your business this way. You know what the issue is? What's Liars. <laughs> okay, tell me more. Liars are the issue because this business partner, there's a, there's a business here, there's one business, there's two business partners. One of them is more in charge than the other one mm -hmm. and he would be making decisions that benefit him financially to feed his ego, whatever. And when his business partner will, you know, hey, what's this, what's this, he's going to lie to him. Oh, we needed to do this, we needed to do that, blah, blah, blah. He's always going to flip it in mm. terms of, you know. Yeah, I've there's, seen that. There's always dysfunction. Yeah. But that's why you've got to create an, an environment that supports empathy and understanding. When they have the space to make mistakes, to show up in a way that's really authentic, that environment reduces that. Hmm. because it's more of a collaborative versus each person needs to win. One of the hmm. biggest challenges I see with leadership is there's a concept, an idea, a way of thinking that you, because you're a leader, you need to have every answer. And that's never going to be the case. Hmm. With a growing company, you may have some insight or you may be learning as the job you know, continues and you grow with it. Actually, this last year I took a position with a company as president, $100 million brand doing really well and they brought me in and I came in for a month to just evaluate what was going on and I saw the mo they needed the most help in their logistics department. There's no tech in that department. The process, they needed like systems and processes to make sure that they weren't running out of product every week, which when I got there every week, they were being yelled at because they're Sold running out. out of product. Mm. So I looked at the head of that department. I'm like, I don't work this way. This is where we're going to spend our time fixing this. And in X amount of months, we fixed it. So he stopped, the, the founder of the company, stopped asking, stopped yelling, but he was testing them twice a week. And it was a horrible meeting, yelling at people, right? And so my biggest accomplishment was getting him to stop yelling at them. Like we put in the systems and processes. Now, if you would have asked me, Rola, this is what I need you to do. And the, you, do you know how to do that? I would have told you, I don't know how to do that just yet but I'm gonna figure it out. And I figured it out very quickly. Like when you understand foundational principles in business, you can build up. And mm. so we fix the problem. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I watched a documentary where Putin w w came to power. Yeah. And he was 
not as extreme as he was as he is today. And, you know, he was making decisions based on the benefit of his country and stuff like sure. that. But there's something about men that, well, I don't want to say men, but it could be any leader, but I see it less with women. Yeah. That as soon as you get that taste of power mm-hmm. in your mouth, you don't care about money. You've got the money printer on. You can turn it on and buy a Lamborghini. Yeah. You become a different person when you get that taste of power. Yeah. Over time. Yeah. And I feel like eventually, even God bless them. Yes, they're good. Whatever. Like th- those those good leaders. But over time, mm-hmm. could that taste of power alter the psyche? That's why I feel like most companies are not run healthily. Like like you know. They're also not run based off core values. If you build a company based off core values, it will always be the driver to the Mm decision-making. And you understand at a deeper level why you're doing the things that you're doing. And Mm -hmm. it needs to be very clear because that awareness builds connection. Mm -hmm. And then we build those neural pathways in our brain to move into a direction that way. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that we, our baseline starts there. Mm -hmm. Values. Everything leads, everything that we do when we want to improve literally anything we have to go back to baseline foundational principles and it starts with our values why do i want to do this it goes back to the conversation about trans- intrinsic versus extrinsic converse or conversation intrinsic versus extrinsic um motivation what coffee would you like darling sorry to interrupt you that's okay hi how are you what would you like shack no, you okay do they have matcha yeah let's get matcha with coconut milk coconut milk <laughs> See how we're meant to be? Hot or cold? Too hot or cold? I think iced. Two iced coconut milk matchas, please. And two bottles of water. Shaq, I'll Thank get you a bottle of water as well. You got the matcha, so, um, and you got the bottle of water, so Ice let's... Matcha and yeah, let's... Uh, Thanks. Oh, I hate... Thank you. <laughs> I see he those dates. I see those that. dates. Are you serious? First date. The first dates. Have you seen that TV show, First Dates? No. And and the bill comes and he goes, you no, got he doesn't. the Coca-Cola. Oh I my got God, the, yeah. no. And I've, I've actually got something in my, uh, I've actually got something in my uh, thing called Maybach Thoughts. I just sit in the <laughs> back and I think about, right? And one of it was splitting the bill is dissolving culture. It's just not very generous. Like, I would buy my friend a coffee. I don't even have to date them, you know? Yeah. It's just a very limited way of thinking. Like, you're not just a generally generous person. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's dissolving culture because I feel like it becomes a business transaction. Totally. Rather than, hey, love you. I got you. Yeah. Hey, love you. Got you. (laughs) Good. Thank you. You know, when people usually say love you, people say love you. Is that what they tell you? Yeah, they don't say thank you. They say love you too. (laughs) Um, Continue. Sorry. So values. And also, here's the thing. I think the number one value being a business leader would have to be transparency and honesty and trust. Yeah, for sure. Those are definitely... Number one. Yeah. Number one. Because then you can communicate with your company in a way, the people in your company in a way that makes them feel as they're a part of the process, the growth, when people, it's the Ikea effect. Have you ever heard of the Ikea effect? No. They've done this study where when people are part of the building of something, so like they made a piece of art, this is the specific study, they all created a piece of art, they end up valuing their artwork more because they made it. Yes. And so kind of the same thing with IKEA. People build these closets uh-huh. and whatever else they're more attached to it. They want they they have this like connection to it, right? So when people build and they feel like they're appreciated and connecting to the the growth of a company and it's acknowledged, then they have this deeper connection to it. Yeah. Because their 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 opinions matter. Their yeah. insights matter. Yeah. So weird you say this because I've got a team that makes reels, but I've started making, I made a reel today and I posted it. I made a reel, I'm a reel, <laughs> reel maker. Put that on the resume. Um, and I just love the reel because yeah? I made it. Ah, uh, yeah. And, and I yeah. mean, if I show you a comparison, it's probably shit. <laughs> right. I've, they've got a whole team that does totally. it. But 
I love it because yeah. I made it. Yeah, no, it completely makes total sense. Being creative is so necessary. Yeah, yeah, in different ways for sure. I mean, you have to have an outlet of that energy, right? However yeah. you release it. I love being conversationally creative, as you as you already know. Yes, you're very conversationally creative. Yeah. Yes. Which is a, a lot for you. Yes, it is. It's a lot sometimes of work. Sometimes it's a lot. It's a lot of work for you. Oh my god. And sometimes I'm like, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Yeah, totally. You don't have to. Pu- you don't have to dance. Let me dance like a crazy man. It's yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Okay, so. You know, Dubai is really run like a company rather than a country. And Sheikh Mohammed is the CEO. Mm. And I can't fault him. You know what he does? What? He goes to, you know, they have like a rating system. Like, how was your, did you have a good time? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you go to a Like even in the restrooms at the mall, you know. Yeah, 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 rating room, yeah. And then the, 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 the two bottom that have rated the least, he personally goes and visits. Um, wow. Yeah, personally goes and visits every year just to wow. be like, how can we make this better? What can we do? Incredible. He, he's, he's a king. He can be in Jamaica or anywhere, but no, Incredible. he's, you know, he loves his people. They're doing such a great job with this country. It's very impressive. I mean, I couldn't tell. My only regret is not moving to Dubai sooner, honestly. Same. Yeah, but you moved when you, when you were going to move. Divine timing, sure. Exactly. I was meant to, you know, finish up in the U.S., but, like, Correct. I love it here so much. Yeah. I hope I get to live here forever. But you never know what happens, <laughs> what the future holds. Yeah, that's true. Are you looking for marriage? Am I looking for marriage? Do I want to be married one day? Yes, I, I believe I would like to be. Do you want kids? I mean, at this point, I don't know. Like, it hasn't happened, so I've never been dying to have kids, but could it happen? Sure. <laughs> I wouldn't mind adopting. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, I love the idea of adopting because you're saving a child. Yes. You're literally saving a child. Yeah. And that's, I mean... I spoke to someone whose friend adopted and, and the kids got some issues, like um, some anger issues and traumatized and panic attacks at night and stuff like that. And, it's, and she's like, yeah, so you have to be careful who you're going to adopt. I was like, yeah, but that person still is in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's heartbreaking you know? seeing, yeah. Like there aren't enough challenges in life. You don't have a family. Sad. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't mind that. Especially with all the sadness going on in the world, the war and everything. So many people yeah. misplaced. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What's your ethnicity again? Egyptian and Syrian. And you were born in America? Born in Saudi Arabia. Do you, do you speak Arabic? Eh? Do you? I'm cast out of this, yeah. Fluent. I mean, I can read and write. And Arabic? Yeah. And, بس لما بحكي, بنسى الكلمات. Oh, wait, you don't no understand. Idea. Oh, never mind. When I speak, I forget words. But I literally forget words in English. So it's going to happen in Arabic because I'm not, yeah. like, I'm not in conversations very often. I yeah. mean, still, even being here, I'm not in it. But I have to tell you, reading has really helped me because as I walk through the city and I read a sign, I'm like, oh, that's that word. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I forgot that word. So it's getting better yeah. living here. I mean, of course it has to. And you're using it. Do you speak Arabic on a daily basis? Not at all. Zero. On a daily basis, everybody speaks English, including all the Arabs yeah. and the Emiratis, literally everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's so crazy. it's not helping. They're so hospitable. There's, yeah. Um, what, how many languages do you know? Just those. Just Arabic and English? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so tell me what you're working on. Tell me what's new. What am I working on? Breaking Cinderella is a big deal. If you were a Disney character, would you be Cinderella? Would I be Cinderella in a Disney character? I wouldn't want to be in any Disney characters. You have to be. There's a gun to your head. (laughs) I I mean, okay, what are our options here? Oh, they're all terrible. Cinderella. No, that's not good. She was tortured by her sisters because she was too pretty. No. That Sounds whole, like you. Yeah. Your sister tortures you. And then she needed someone to save her. Literally, I have a Shut program Sarah. called Breaking Cinderella. <laughs> okay. I mean, can't. I can't. Sorry, <laughs> not happening. I guess the gun's going off. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Can you explain to me Breaking Cinderella? So, not exclusive to women. It's a program, a belief that in order for me to be powerful... 
I have to go get this job. That job is going to make me powerful. That man is going to make me powerful. This experience, this home, this whatever. So the power is sitting outside of us. The idea is to cultivate and create the power internally, build it inside of us, generate it, and then direct our energy to the job, to the man, to the experience. And that way I'm empowered. I'm not losing energy feeding my attachment to something else outside of myself. That way I can build myself up. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different way of being. And so the program itself dissects the internal communication strategies, deep levels of awareness and understanding. Obviously we go into values and we build on our, uh, to create an intrinsic motivator where we, when we really deeply understand ourselves, we can accelerate our, our results like incredibly fast mm -hmm. and then you add that with our external communication strategies how we you and I communicate presenting I tell people if you can get in front of a room get in front of a room I don't care how scared you are you're gonna do it anyway your voice is shaking your hands are shaking do it anyway because the more you force yourself to do those things and, and the good news is once you build all those internal communication strategies by the time you get in front of the room it's a bigger motivator than you so as your body's responding the motivation is is so strong for you to do it that you'll overcome all, all the negative feelings that you're feeling in your body and when you're really driven by your purpose it's not about you thank you it now becomes about your message your impact right and then it makes you less nervous so if you can get in front of a room get in front of a stage you should absolutely be doing that because you become the expert at that point. Thank you. So you're pushing people, Shaq is Pushing and pushing water. them. You're pushing them to go outside of their comfort zone. Because the to, idea to get something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. But here's the thing. In order for us to be in our growth mode, we always have to be in discomfort. We need to be comfortable sure. in our discomfort. Sure. If you're comfortable, thank you. If you're comfortable, you're not in growth. True. You need to remove comfort. True. And be okay with it. You know, I had a doctor, a longevity doctor. Shaq, we can move. He said, oh, it's okay. He said, Yum. good? So good. Is it? Um, they don't even pain us. Um, they, he said, the quickest way to age is to be comfortable. Makes sense. Because you, your energy is moving, right? Yeah. So you're either, either moving towards growth or decaying the other yeah. way there's no standing still in the middle you yeah. think you're standing still you're not you're actually decaying yeah that's also you know let's tie that back into business if a business is not constantly redeveloping and it stays the same it's going to die exactly 100 percent. that's why businesses fail 10 years in wow yeah like people think oh I've, I've made it this far i'm good no you're not the world is rapidly changing if you're not keeping up with ai right now yeah. you're going to be in trouble soon wow yeah cheers Cheers. Thank you. So good. Hopefully we'll be tequila next time when we cheers. <laughs> good. That's very good. Yeah, I mean, that's the scary thing. And, you know, I always thought to myself when I spoke to my business partner, I said, why would we ever sell this company? We can just hold on to it. And they're like, no, we should, we should always have a sell plan. Absolutely. You know? Here, I'll take it. Yeah, okay. Thanks. No, I'm going to put it here. It's okay. Yeah. I'll hold it. I'll hold it too. <laughs> just trying to copy my guess um okay what were we talking about I forgot now well C let's just go back to Cinderella so what is it is it a platform it's a digital program okay and then I I go into businesses I'm working on expanding it in the region going to Saudi Arabia to speak about it speaking about it here and doing teaching the public so not just even though Breaking, Breaking Cinderella is for the public, right? It's the mass market, everybody learning and understanding that. But I, I use the same principles in my leadership development programs uh, for corporate. Because okay. I have a public program and a, and a business program. So all of it applies. It's just marketed under Breaking Cinderella versus or under the Allure Solutions brand. Got yeah. And... So it's, it's a program online, it's a website, you go on there and then you basically have one-on-ones or it's a courses? The, no, it's video, video content. Okay. So you jump on, go and through all you? the videos, it's me. 
um, and you go through and there's, you know, downloadables and printables so that, you know, the idea is to keep them fully engaged. Okay. So we're launching it next month as a mastermind because yep. accountability is really big. Most people, 90% of people don't finish programs. Yeah. It's sad. It's like the, yeah. the, the, the desire for growth is there, but the follow through isn't there. That's why in my program, we work on developing intrinsic motivators from the beginning, mm -hmm. but I need to help keep them accountable in the, from the beginning. Sure. Yeah. So you what's really incredible about masterminds, I've run a few of them now and it's so amazing. I, I've incorporated this piece where at the end of every call, Think of it this way, your life force energy, your energy is powerful, it's creative, right? Mm -hmm. Every person has that and you're using that to create your dreams and desires, right? Mm -hmm. What happens when in a group, in your mastermind group, you each take turns and each person speaks out loud the creative goal that they're working on. So it's like, I just you know walked up to my laptop and I looked at the, I saw the congratulations email right there and they're describing it with so much emotion and excitement and everybody's eyes are closed and they're sending their energy and intention to support that person, right? Mm -hmm. It amplifies the results. The stories we have mm -hmm. from our mastermind groups are insane. One girl came in not knowing what she was gonna do. She left wealth management and she was still deciding between being in our mastermind and like, you know, week by week working and figuring it out, she ends up wanting to write a book not only decides this, but ends up getting a, si a book, a large um, publisher to sign her. She's been traveling the world now for a couple years, mm. doing this, doing incredibly well. One of the other girls, she at one point said, amongst other things that she was working on, she's like, I want to have a podcast. Not only did she get a podcast, but they're an international company. She now represents the podcast for their company. She also wins an award for that podcast. Mm -hmm. One girl signs the biggest deal of her life, has to leave completely because she's now moving to China. Like the acceleration of the goals, mm. the accountability and the energy, are just wow, magic. Mm. Yeah, really, really powerful. That's why doing it as a mastermind is to me the one of the quickest ways to help people accelerate mm. now there's a lot of things that you have to incorporate right like that's one piece that nobody should miss why did you name it breaking cinderella because cinderella is a great example of women or in this case specifically women giving their power away to something else growing up in saudi i often heard you know i can't do things because i'm a girl and it really didn't sit well with me. I went to an American school, so I was oscillating between cultures. You know, my parents being Middle Eastern, a little more conservative. And then the American school, that's not, mm -hmm. right? And so I wanted to do things that I wasn't allowed to do. And so I wanted, like that gets you to think, when, when you're going through a challenge, that's when you know how powerful you are. When you're in your biggest challenges, are you breaking down? Are you wobbling a little and working towards, you know, the solution? Or are you completely empowered because you know it's just the, the solution's about to show up. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it's only a matter of time. Let me ride this wave and not crumble, right? Mm -hmm. And so in those moments, how many times, even me, someone who's so driven, so wanting my own independence and freedom, even me, I have those moments like, wouldn't it be so great that somebody else came and like helped take care of this? A man came along, took, like the thought occurs to me. And I, and I hear that, and I'm like, what? Even with everything I'm doing, I still have that thought creep up? Like, no, the, nobody's coming to save me. I remind myself, I have power inside of me that can create a solution, that can create whatever. And when you really start to focus your energy and intention this way, you become more powerful. You accelerate and get opportunities that you wouldn't believe that you would get. Look at the things that have happened to me recently. Those things happened very fast, right? Very interesting. Yeah. You're also like avoiding a opportunity for growth. If you go, oh, I wish I had a man to fix this. I wish I had somebody else fix it. Right. That's a, because God won't take you to what he can't take you through. Mm. 
I like that. So he's taking you somewhere for you to go through something because it's necessary for you. Right. We're meant to evolve. Yeah. Like whatever. If we're if our baseline's here to evolve to that next level, we have to own that process and and what we're meant to learn in that experience. Mm-hmm. What's the hardest thing? You know, the thing is, for you, I mean, as a woman, it's very normal to want uh, a man to fix this and everything. Do you not fear that with the philosophy that you've just described, you're masculinizing women, which isn't natural? No, not at all. Creating independence and freedom does not make a woman masculine. It makes her have the backbone and the the strength to be able to handle life's challenges. Every woman should have that. I'm not masculine. A man wants to show up and take care of things for the love of God, go ahead. I'm just not going to sit here and count on it when I need to be able to take care of myself. It goes back to that when you're on a plane and the airbags drop, you take care of yourself first and then you move on to others. I need to take care of myself first and then we can discuss, you know, whatever. The If a man in my life is handling everything, God bless you, handle it. But am I capable of handling it? Of course. Does it make me masculine because I can handle things and I have independence? And if you are the kind of person that beats women, I'm, I can walk away. I'm not stuck in a relationship because I need you for my survival because I haven't done anything to create independence. So I'm now, this is a big problem for a lot of women who are in abusive relationships. They can't leave because they don't have the financial support. Wow. Yeah, it's a big problem. It's a prison. Exactly. So why create a sense of imprisonment when you can create independence and freedom and you can still be feminine? I think men are very confused by the two. I think because they've seen, you know, to be fair, very masculine women running things. But that can also be turned on and off. I can be like a powerhouse at work and then soften it up when it comes to real life. The thing is... You can't be masculine at work and then before you go home, you just turn it off it's in your mind. It's not true. Right? Are you not different with different types of people depending on your mood, your energy level, the type of person you're dealing with, you change, no? That's exactly my point. When you have to be with a man that puts you in your feminine. His energy puts you in your feminine. Women don't come home and before they open the door going, I'm going to turn on my feminine and I'm going to turn off my masculine. No, they don't consciously think that way. Exactly. You have to be with someone that puts you in your feminine. Yeah, because if you're with a man that's like... A simp. Not (laughs) supportive. You know? You know, not supportive of that way of being, then you're going to show up differently. Yeah, that's not natural. So, okay, I understand what you're saying. So, the... the, (laughs) Actually, I got... I got... So, you know that video that went viral, right? Yeah because people don't know about this. So let's talk about sigmas. The majority of people don't know that there are other personality archetypes. We always talk about alpha beta. We don't talk about the rest. Important to note that just because these exist doesn't mean they're actually acknowledged by the world of psychology, right? It's very generalized, so it's not even acknowledged. Not the point. If we're gonna have an alpha beta conversation, let's include the other personality types. I'm not gonna go through all of them, But the sigma, I think, was really important for women to understand. And the reason this even came about for me, I got out of a relationship. And being single, I'm online and I'm seeing all these videos from men and women, them talking about needing a woman to be submissive. And I was like, interesting. I'm very driven. I'm not trying to be masculine. I'm just very driven and working on my career. I want my men to lead, but... There needs to be like this balance, like lead where you're strong, I'm gonna handle, you know, whatever else. We can be a power couple. Again, doesn't make me masculine and I haven't had any problems with this. But what I was seeing online was that they're saying like, you need to be submissive. And for me, it was really upsetting because I'm like, this is not who I am. I'm not gonna be submissive. It doesn't mean I'm arguing, it just means like, I, I've got my own strengths and let's celebrate and cherish those, those things about me. Anyway, so I find out that a Sigma personality type is, I would say an evolved alpha. 
meaning they don't necessarily need to the, all the acknowledgement that the alphas need. They don't need to be the most important. They feel this natural sense of leadership and because it's so innate in them and they're not trying to prove anything, they tend to like sit back, not trying to lead on purpose, but because they have natural leadership skills, they get pulled into becoming leaders, but they don't lead with that machismo kind of personality. Wanting everyone to know who they're the leader. Exactly. But, and I've talked to so many men that are like this, that are CEOs and major, you know, heads of different businesses and, and they agree that those qualities, is, that's who they are. They're not the typical, what they say is like the alpha that's running the show. They've got qualities that for, for a female like myself, who's driven and cares about her career, that is more of a suitable choice than an alpha. Because mm-hmm. we're not submitting mm-hmm. to a man. We want to be equals. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean equal like I'm as strong as you are and all the crap that they bring in. It's not about that. It's about respect and honoring each other at, at, at equal, in an equal way. Yes. Listen, anybody can have an opinion on the internet, right? If that somebody is an alpha it. and they want a submissive woman, they're going to say, hey, I want a submissive woman, right? Yeah. I understand what you say with, uh, with Sigma as well. Um, but, you know, when you say a woman submitting, being like submissive or submitting? I look at them kind of the same way. I don't okay. think there's much of a difference. Okay. In... Because a man is not submissive, right? A man is dominating, right? That's how we are. That's how we've been uh, for thousands of years. It's yeah. been in our nature. We're the ones that go and like kill the animal and you guys collect the berries. But submitting happens both ways. The woman submits to the husband, but the husband also submits to the woman. Right. Equal respect. Correct. Right? I don't think anyone is above anyone or anyone's exactly. below anyone. You both submit. But it's in your natural DNA for the female to be submissive. And, and because here's the thing. I had a woman. I, I, I was kind of seeing a girl months ago. And I paid for her groceries. Like we went to the movies afterwards, went to the groceries. And, she, and she's like, no, no. I was like, no, listen, you're fine. You're with me. Blah, blah, blah. It wasn't a big deal. And then in the car, she was still talking about it. I can't believe you did that. Da, da, da. And I wanted her to like, like snap out of it because she was stuck in that. Oh, I can't really? believe you. I said to her, listen, you gave me the opportunity to feel like an alpha, like I'm taking care of you. Yeah. So th- I know it's hard for you to let me do that, but it's thank you for saying, letting yeah. me know. Yeah. And she just snapped out of it. She said, mm. oh, I did something nice. Yeah. You didn't do anything for me. I did something nice for you. Yeah. And then she, it, it popped. Yeah. So you also, women also have to give the opportunity to the man to be able Absolutely. to feel like the leader. And I've, met, I've said this before, that's a gift from the universe. When, when there are gifts coming to you, accept them. Just like any compliment comes to you, don't deflect and turn it around. That person probably deflects comp- compliments as well. Mm-hmm. The idea is to accept the gifts and when a man gives you something out of you know the desire to be chivalrous or whatever their reasoning is, accept it. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't take away anything from us or it doesn't take the um, our power away. What it comes down to is that what both men and women are seeking is respect, mutual mm-hmm. respect and honor. If we come from that perspective, it doesn't matter what personality type you are, the alphas respecting women, giving them the opportunity to grow and be great on their own, not to feel so insecure that they need to bring down the woman to be submissive. Mutual respect is the best way for any relationship to thrive. And a woman being having her sense of independence and freedom, if anything were to go on, go wrong, in my opinion, is a must. That's not, that's a non-negotiable in my mind. Yeah, I agree. But from my experience, I said, like, you, you need to let the man feel like a man. Of course. Right? Nobody said anything about not letting men feel like men. Please take care of things. It doesn't mean if I'm building things, learning skill set, having my own money aside, all those things where I'm okay if we break up, then 
how does that take away from you being a man? Please be a man and lead. I, there's mm. so much confusion about this. And it doesn't make me masculine mm. to want to have independence and freedom. Mm. It means I'm taking care of me. I'm smart. I'm not being dumb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Completely agree. We, like, women have both sides. The masculine side and the, and the feminine side. Um, we all do. Yeah. You're obviously well-versed and educated on this stuff. You're that character from Billionaire. What was it? Wendy. Wendy Rhodes. Wendy Rhodes. What's your qualification? I am obsessive in learning behavioral science from an early age. I'm the kind of person that on Sunday morning, I'm exhausted and it's been a weekend and I went to bed late and I'm still doing research on science and different things on the subject matter. Yeah. I love that. Because I'm obsessed. I could have like multiple PhDs right now, but I did it on my own, you know? So I've gone through so many programs. I got certified through one of Tony Robbins' coaching companies. I did another strategic intervention coaching. I've done like many different Every year, I would do one major event of some teacher to study a different modality and a different way of doing things. And so when you learn so many different types of modalities of healing and, you know, the science behind how we operate, then you kind of come up with the repeating patterns. And my idea of, of, I want to simplify everything. I want to make it digestible and understandable and the fastest way I can get results. Mm -hmm. I've done so many different things that I've taken a little bit from that have value. And then I've, you know, tweaked some of it a little bit because I I noticed it worked better in, in a certain way. So the idea of being obsessive and being passionate, for me, that's my qualification. I mean, granted, I, I've, I have many different types of certifications, but like when you really are passionate mm. like I am, I can, I can sit down with somebody and get to the root cause very quickly. Mm-hmm. And because I also studied business development training, I was in coaching, a uh, coaching program for business coaching and, and sales training at Kellogg. And so I, I incorporate all of those things because that's part of the communication process, right? Mm-hmm. The foundational principles of success for a business, foundational principles and expanded on the behavioral science Mm -hmm. and then the next level of you know leadership as you dive into that the conscious leadership space you incorporate all those and Mm -hmm. you create a pretty strong program Uh, what you do is very over there's an overlap with what we're talking about because it's human behavior right you're dealing with human psychology human behavior so of course what you see in uh, the office space uh, n- relates back to because I'm sure you also see people that limit themselves. Of course, everybody does in some way. Yeah. Look, do you know a guy called Master Shri? Yes. Do you know Master Shri? Yeah. I mean, I don't know him, okay. but I know of him. Yeah. 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 Uh, everyone asks me, what's your favorite podcast? Look, I- I've done over a hundred. I love, I love like all of them. There's yeah. something special about all of them. But the one that changed how I think was that one. Tell me how. Three hours I was with him. I needed to pee, he needed to pee. I did (laughs) not want to let him go. Amazing. (laughs) What was the takeaway? He said to me, there was many takeaways. He, I said to him, you preach visualization. Mm -hmm. But you also preach that everything's pre-written in our destiny. So what's the point? of visualizing if everything is pre-written in our destiny. Mm -hmm. He said, your destiny isn't pre-written. Destinies are pre-written. Yes. You're walking down a road. There's a door to your left, door to your right, door to your left, door to your right. You choose which door to open. And then that. But the destiny that... But but what happens when you walk through that door has already been pre-written. Right. So you inherit these pre-written destinies that the universe has. Yeah. Right? And not opening these doors is a limit, is, is, is basically, you know, also religiously, spiritually, they say uh, the devil shows itself in your life by making you not believe in yourself or something like that. The sure. devil, the devil uh, shows itself in your life by uh, putting limits of you not believing in yourself, something like that. I'm butchering it completely. But that's what it is. Yeah. So the devil will come into your life going, don't open that door. You're mm-hmm. not good enough.
I mean, this goes down back to if you want to succeed, you've got to start from within. You've got to get silent and identify who you are and what you want. Because if you don't, you're going to be influenced by everyone and everything around you. And you're going to go in a direction that's unclear and inauthentic to yourself. Mm-hmm. What you just said, another way that, to say it is, see, <clears throat> like I'll go to a coffee shop, right, with my friend. And he can't relax. He's mm. looking at the line. He's thinking, what do you think the rent is? Look how many people are buying coffee. They must be making a lot of money. We should do a coffee shop. And I'm like, can you just relax? Huh. Stop steering out of your lane. That's not for you, mm. right? And for me, like, I stay in my lane and I accept everything God gives me. Because yeah. I know if I accept everything God gives me, no man can take away from me. Mm-hmm. But if I steer out of my lane to get things that God doesn't want for me... God will take it away from me. Yeah. So, yeah, what you just said before, just kind of staying, you know, not getting FOMO, staying solitude into who you are and your frequency. When you really know yourself, you operate from a different place. Mm. You know, they say that, you know, they talked about enlightenment being the highest level and then they changed it to authenticity Mm -hmm. was the highest frequency that we could vibrate at and it's true when you get when you're so authentic and understand yourself at a deeper level there's no confusion in your space and in your field right there's a there's a process uh it's a coherence process where you can you know where we have this electromagnetic field around us and that field can have disorder in it like if you're lying it, the field around you it kind of contracts and creates um, a frequency that isn't supportive of your highest well-being. The idea is you, if you stay in truth, there's a heart breathing technique that we teach that, from the HeartMath Institute. The HeartMath Institute's done over 30 years of studies on the heart, and we understand that the heart sends more electrical impulses to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. What that means essentially is the heart's got its own intelligence. So if we tap in our energy, we send our energy to our heart and we do that by focusing on it, where we put our attentions, where we send our energy, by focusing on the heart and breathing through and just having this intention on our heart, we create coherence in the field and we can see it um, in, in lab studies, we can see the, the coherence happen in real time. And so what happens is when that coherence, it's order in your field. When there's order in your field, you're making way for the good opportunities, the synchronicities to flow versus being blocked because of the issues that you're having in your field. Mm. So that's why becoming very clear, we all, we're so, we're all running around in life, you know, going to the next thing, the next goal, the next experience, the next... It is so important, and I used to be like this more than anyone. I didn't take the time to sit back in my 20s particularly and, and, and sit down and really evaluate who I was. I did when I went through a program, or I did in certain, at certain times, but I didn't, didn't do it consistently. Now this is something I do every single day. I have check-ins with myself. Mm. And those check-ins are incredible because you go through your day and life is happening. If you veer off 1%, and you keep doing that week on week and you're not checking in, you're going to be pretty far off Mm -hmm. over a period of time. But if you're checking yourself and coming back to alignment of what you know your your true values are and the direction that you should be moving Mm -hmm. towards because it's ultimately what you want, you keep doing that, you're going to have success on a level that you didn't imagine before. Mm -hmm. And I know you know this, Mm -hmm. right? That's why Buffett and... um, What's his name? Buffett and... um, Microsoft guy. Why am I blanking on his name? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Gates and Buffett were at a dinner party with his family, with Gates's family, and they look at them and said, you guys are so successful. What is it that made you guys so successful? And versus just spitting it out, they wanted to see if they had the same answer. So they wrote it down on a piece of paper and they showed it at the same time and they both wrote the word focus. Hmm. Because focus is our life force energy <laughs> being sent to whatever it wow. is that we want to create, right? If my life force is being scattered around 
by this thing, this thing, this thing, angry at that person, energy be going over here, resentment over there. If it's being scattered, how much energy do I have to build this amazing business that I thought I wanted? Or maybe this little side thing I want to do as well and whatever else, Correct. right? If you cultivate that energy and build it towards the one thing you want, you're going to get drastically better results. In other words, what's the point of plan B if it's only going to distract you from plan A? Right. Yeah. Why have a plan B? Mm -hmm. It means you don't believe in plan A. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in plan A, your conviction needs to be worked on. Yeah. Because you're going to show up differently when you have conviction. Mm -hmm. People will believe you. Right now they don't because you don't. Yeah. Uh, something I like about you, well, there's a lot I like about you, but something I like about you is your conviction on breaking Cinderella. You are on this thing like oh. you see the vision at the end of the road. Yes. Yes. Because I know what an impact it makes. It's made it for myself. It's the people that I've exposed it to. The, it's so powerful when you start to think and believe this way and start applying these principles and these frameworks. Mm. It is life changing. So yeah, what, how could I not have conviction? Mm -hmm. Conviction. This mm -hmm. is the only thing for me that I know if I consistently stay on it, I get results. Yeah. How, I mean, look, last week. I got, wait, last week? No, today's Friday. I got an award for a rising star. I've been here for officially three months. Yeah. There are people who've been here for how long and never, you know, haven't yeah. received something like that. And I'm not saying that to boast, but I'm saying that to show that the work works, mm -hmm. right? You don't get results like that without doing this type of work and yeah. it accelerates because of you doing yeah. the work. Yeah. If you like this video, consider subscribing. We do weekly podcasts with experts in every industry to help you find direction and guide you on your way. Now let's get back into it. See this guy there? He's depressed. Oh, okay. I don't know. Just life doesn't seem amazing. Life doesn't seem exciting. It's hard for him to be grateful. Too much social media, too much comparison. What do, you have, what do you have to say to him? I mean, you're, you deal with these guys when they're not in the right mindset at work and they're depressed. and They're, they're checked out. Checked out. Not even in terms of checked out as, as of the company and want to quit. More checked out of life. Yeah, I've had that. Seeking Actually, meaning, purpose. Yeah. You know, I was doing, I had a project with a company where I'd meet them on a monthly basis and then we did, I had a handful of one-on-ones with their leadership. And I get a call one day and they're asking me to meet with someone, another manager that's not on my list. And they're like, look, we're having serious prob problems with him. They're thinking about firing him and wanted to see if you'd be open to sitting down with him and seeing if you could help. I said, of course. So, and this is all over Zoom. So I have a Zoom call with him and we go through a framework that I consider a success framework because it identifies our drivers, right? We go through the whole thing and we identify that where he's missing, where the gap is. This is one session. That's it. I get a call a few days later saying, what did you do? What, we don't like how did he's a different person. And I was like, yeah, because this framework, once you understand it and apply it, you get different results. You're driven intrinsically versus extrinsically, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I don't need you to motivate me. I don't need any motivation. Now I'm driven. I want to do better. Like you create that type of motivation, you get results. And that's why when he understood how to apply that, now he uses it. Mm -hmm. I had someone write me a uh, testimonial recently on LinkedIn and it was really powerful. He went on after the work we did to get promoted three times within a year and ra multiple raises applying everything that we used. So the work works, I mean, it's just a framework, different frameworks that you put into place, ask a few questions, they identify for themselves where the gap is, right? I ask them the right questions and then we come to a conclusion and then you get different results. So what's his first step? What's his first step? He's watching you right now, he's depressed. What's his first step? Well, I'd, I'd have to go through the framework with him. What is the framework? Okay, what does he so need we to look start at first? with, I would look at, I would start with six human needs. Let's look at your needs and how your needs, if we're in a working environment, I want to identify that at work. Now, for example, the, the guy who wrote the testimonial for me at the time was struggling with his partner, his wife, 
and he was sleeping on the couch. So we had to address that aspect, right? So you can't skip life, even though that's not a working issue. It's an issue that affects work. Life affects work. So you have to address those two. Mm -hmm. In this case, we identify specifically the work, like where what's missing on this scale. Like one to 10, we evaluate the different needs, how he's meeting those needs at work. The specific person that I had mentioned, top two needs, the drivers, weren't being met at work. They were very low. And there were two of his top needs. That's a big problem. That's a great way to lose interest. Mm -hmm. So we start there. We do that, and then we go in deeper into the awareness, and the, you know we can do some other work. But I would start there, just to identify immediately where the gaps are. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a, a is there a range of topics that he can choose from that what his needs are? No. No. No, we identify them in the six. What if drugs is one of them? That's a need of mine. It's, but it's not the drugs that are need. It's like, what need is that satisfying? Are you getting a certain sense of certainty? Are you getting connection to yourself because you're doing drugs and you feel, you know, connected and you're so disconnected typically? Are you, Is you know, coffee a need? You're talking about physical, biological needs that change. I bet they start, they can start, obviously they do start with, in the mind. Because coffee there's a makes point, me so happy. I know, me too. <laughs> like, 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 if I didn't have coffee, I wouldn't get out of bed. Wow. Like, I'd be in bed going, oh, you're about to have a coffee. I know, I feel the same way. <laughs> yes, uh? I love coffee in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And a cigarette. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, no. I helped a girl quit smoking. Good. Yeah. Good, good. Big win. Yeah, yeah, I don't smoke. That was a joke. Good. Look at the framework, see what the six needs are, and see which one is not being fulfilled. Not that one is not being fulfilled. Typically, many are not. But we identify and work through how to fill those needs. I mean, which one? Not one. Which ones are not yeah. being fulfilled? Yeah, and okay. then we strategize around how to, how to create that at work. Okay. Breakups. Yes. He's going through a breakup. Uh-huh. What is the best way of dealing with a breakup? Great question, actually. So I have a process for this. Think of it this way. If we break everything down to life force energy, I'm sending my energy, I'm putting attention to something and I'm sending my energy to it. So if I'm sending my energy to a person and that person at one point was sending their energy to me, it worked, right? I was getting filled, I'm not depleted because energy is coming back to me. If I'm still sending energy to this person and they're no longer sending energy to me, there's a problem. I need to stop sending my life force to this person and turn it around onto me. Life force is very giving. I mean, we don't, we don't stop to think that what generates the planet? Electricity, right? It's running through everywhere. There's literal electricity generating our body. It's mm -hmm. running through our body. If I want to move my hand, I send my brain sends an electrical mm -hmm. impulse for it to move. Electricity is running my body. Well, if you combine that with the idea of the energy that we're sending out, I can. I'm a powerhouse, right? So I'm powerhousing this guy or this girl. I need to powerhouse myself. And the way you do that it was by sending that focused intention on yourself, building yourself up, taking frequencies of energy. We now understand frequencies of sound and energy. That frequency can heal, right? They're, do, they're healing people with sound frequency now, right? There's whole st all these studies on this. So I can do the same for myself. Words have a, a, a vibrational frequency, right? We know Dr. Emoto's work on water. Have you guys, have you know about this? Okay. So Dr. Emoto did a study on water where they had two separate uh, water bottles and they basically took words and they taped it on each of the water bottles. One section of words were, I hate you, you suck, angry, angry, negative words, right? And so they, they put that intention and that energy on the water, right? Second set was, I love you, you're wonderful, all those types of things. They took the molecular structure of the water, flash froze it, put it under a high intensity microscope, and the water that had all the negative words were this black, purple, blurry, nothing to look at, nothing impressive. The words that were positive 
intention were these beautiful crystallized snowflake. Were the words written on a piece of paper yes. or a tape and put but on the bottle? Keep in mind the energy of the person was going into like, I hate you, right? Like the energy was going into the water. Now, when you think about but it was us, just what words? Just words, but what energy, have consciousness? energy, a word has a frequency. So as I'm saying, I hate you, that's carrying a frequency of energy. Damn. And it's changing the molecular structure of the water. Mm. What are you doing to your body? Mm. So the idea is turn the energy onto yourself. You're about 90% water. What are you doing? You're mm -hmm. actually affecting your body. That's why people get sick or the opposite. Mm -hmm. People heal their bodies. I actually healed my body recently. So if you understand this when it comes to relationships and you feed yourself back up, which means now your focused intention of this person being your attention all the time needs to stop. Right? And as we do that, we're reprogram the neural pathways in our brain, but you have to force yourself to do this. That means every time I think about that person, I remember, stop, refocus my energy on myself. Let me build the energy in front of me. Like you're a beautiful person. You deserve better. You deserve the best. You're wonder, like whatever the frequency of that you need to fill yourself up with, fill yourself up, but focus your attention and your energy on yourself, building it. And the idea is intention just have the intention and you'll have the results mm -hmm. you just can't expect it overnight mm -hmm. it takes time to build like you're compounding that energy mm -hmm. and as long as you're patient you can get there pretty quickly mm -hmm. and the more this happens to you in life the more you learn how to respond to it and you're not affected as easily mm -hmm. If you like this video, consider subscribing. We do weekly podcasts with experts in every industry to help you find direction and guide you on your way. Now let's get back into it. Okay, so that's all well and good. But this guy's still heartbroken and you haven't told him what to do. What do you mean? Yes, I did. You just told him about frequencies and, and stuff like that. And how his energy is depleted because he's not sending energy to himself and neither is that person. It's going outward. It needs to come inward. And he's saying... He needs to build himself up. Mm, build himself up. Then he should do a neutralization process. Uh-huh. And that collapses the idea that this person, that there's a loss. Because in every experience, there's, a, there's an actual balance between positive and negative. We have an imbalanced perspective. Mm -hmm. So if we balance our perspective and identify all the good with the bad, quote unquote good bad, okay. then we can be neutral. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is following Dr. Martini's work. He's done a lot of study on this we can get into a neutral space of love and gratitude for the overall experience and not have an attachment or disattachment in either way, but just very neutral. Sure. I understand. Um, naturally, when you're in a relationship, mm -hmm. you lose yourself. You can, but you don't have to. That's a I, part of awareness. I know. But <laughs> I know, but it's naturally over time going to happen. Six years in a relationship, sure, okay. me and you are in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I play basketball on Saturdays, right? Mm -hmm. After two years of being in a relationship, babe, you're really going to go play basketball again? You know, like on Saturdays, I love to hang out with you and stuff like that. Babe, you know that's what I do. That's just what, that's my character. I love playing basketball. Right. Then one of the guys goes, hey guys, let's not play next season. And you go, yeah, you know what? You're right. Roller doesn't like it. It's a Saturday. It's the only time we have together. Don't worry about it. Over time, gradually, erosion. Mm -hmm. in a, it's an erosion way, not a sudden way. You don't feel it. Yeah. But over time, you lose yourself. And you almost become this shape that only fits with this person. Because you've lost yourself, right? Naturally. Now, then when you break up, when she leaves you, which 80% of the uh, divorce is initiated by women, which is something I love. Because men, I feel, have more tolerance. They just say, one more year, one more year. Let's hope next year gets better. But I love that women do that because we need it. Yeah. And then when you detach, you've become this shape that only fits with this girl. Then you go out on the single market and you figure out that nobody fits with your shape that you are. And then you start thinking to yourself, I should call her because I can only fit with her. You have to go into a very dark, deep place to cut yourself and redevelop yourself and rebuild yourself so then she never even comes to your mind you know why because now you're a shape that doesn't fit with her <laughs> well first of all 
I would never use that many negative metaphors in any conversation because negative metaphors surpass conscious and go to subconscious and you're programming your mind to think very negatively. What was negative? There are a few, a few Tell me one. negatives. Um, the, the, sh the negative, or you only fit the shape with her. So that, mm -hmm. that thinking is really limited. You're not, it's not that it only fits her. You got comfortable in being a certain way mm -hmm. that didn't actually fit because you broke up. So therefore, there was a problem that you're either growing or decaying. You were decaying and it finally had to end because there was decay, it didn't, wasn't gonna last. You weren't in your discomfort in the relationship enough to make a change for the positive. Correct. So the idea here is that it's not about whether or not this person is the end all. There's no one person that's the end all be all for you. And you were ever evolving beings. And that's why you see relationships start off so well and then deteriorate because you're, when you look at the needs, this is a great one to go back to. When you look at the needs, at a high level, your needs are being met across the board. You're getting your love and connection, your significance, you're growing with them, you're, they're contributing. All the things are being hit at a high level. Over time, all those start to drop. Now, if you use that framework over the course of your relationship, you can manage it and make sure you're still doing the same things that you did in the beginning. And if not the same, in different ways, but still, still supplying that love and connection, still you know, showing significance, certainty, and variety, all those things that you, know, you just got kind of lazy on. And again, you started decaying. Of course your relationship's gonna decay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that's a negative. I would say that's realistic. No, I meant the metaphors. Anytime you use a meta, you have to, we have to be very careful about using metaphors in life mm. because they're so powerful. You can heal mm. with metaphors and you can destroy it with them. Mm -hmm. Saying things like, I feel stuck, I'm like hitting a wall, it really embeds it into your, because it, it activates a sensory part of your brain. So you want to be very careful. Use positive ones all day long, but so many people use negative metaphors and it keeps you stuck, mm. keeps you in that challenge. Mm. Really important to pay attention to that. Do you meditate? Every day. What time? First thing when I wake up in the morning. Before coffee? Before coffee, yes. And in bed? <laughs> no, not in bed. Oh wait, sorry. I was thinking about the coffee. Yes, no, meditation in bed. Yeah, I sit up and I start before I do anything. Guided meditation on YouTube? Uh, no, I have ones that I follow that are not on YouTube. Ooh, can you send it to me? I can, yeah. I have been told I need to start meditating. Everybody. By many people. Everybody. By my meditate. doctor. If you actually understood the benefits of doing it, you would never not do it. You wouldn't skip a day. I have regular panic attacks. Oh my God. Yeah. You've yeah. Even more reason. That's why your doctor said to do it. Yeah. 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 My doctor gave me Valium. Oh my God. And, uh, and she said, put yeah. this next to your bed. And when you, because all my panic attacks happen at midnight. Interesting. Yeah, but it happens once every three months. Not regularly. I know I said regularly. Did something happen that was traumatic? I was actually born like this. I used to have panic oh. attacks in the middle of the night uh, oh, wow. when I was a kid. But my parents made it worse because they wouldn't be like, it's okay, it's okay. They'd be like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And you're having mm, a panic attack yeah. and you have to deal with that. Yeah, While, yeah. what's wrong? What, what do I do? Meditation do I do? would help, greatly help yeah. you, yeah. So, okay. So, uh, how long do you meditate for in the morning? Depends, anywhere from 30 minutes to like an oh. hour and 20 minutes. Bro, I don't have time for 30 minutes. That's why I wake up early. Give me like five minute one. I can use that excuse one. too, but instead I wake up earlier to fit in meditation. Give me like a 15 minute one. You can have a 15 minute one. Yeah, you can start small. If I'm meditating with you, I'll do it for an hour. <laughs> but if I'm gonna do it on my own, 15 minutes tops. You don't meditate with, so you're, do, you're in your own space and your own realm. You're not like with somebody, I mean, the idea is it's not about, unless you're working on a group consciousness to elevate and, you know, make change for a specific reason, then it's all you on your own. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, 15 minutes I could do. Anything more than that. You know, and the other thing is, I, I'm from Australia. So, I wake up in the morning and Australia's already four hours ahead. Right, so you feel behind. No, so I, I wake up to a million messages yeah. and calls. Yep. So, yeah. I'm, I wake up with anxiety. Yeah. Straight away. Mm. Hey, call me when you wake up. Did you see this? Uh, did you see that? Yeah. Did, like, she quit this morning. By the way, interesting thing I gotta tell you. Um, 
when life is going good, I'm not happy, right? Today, this morning, I had some things that have happened in the in the business in Australia, uh, and some bad, some negative things that have happened. Uh-huh. Some people quitting, some people taking market share. Me and my business partner on the phone. He tried to get a little bit aggressive with me. I cooled it down. I'm I'm, I'm very good at emotional intelligence. I don't let things escalate. Mm. Um, I forgive. Yeah. In my mind, on the spot, I forgive. That's good. Yeah, you're you're trying to make it sound like I'm doing this while you're there doing this and blah, blah, blah. I don't pick at it and go hey bro don't you know what right. I mean I just it's yeah. okay he's yeah. angry he's upset right so because um, the most important thing in a business isn't the business it's the business partnership without the business partnership you have no business and fuck the business you and I me and the partner can do this again together mm-hmm. so you know I had a lot of, I woke up this morning with a lot of issues that I had to handle on the phone on email and everything right but I'm super energetic today and I'm super happy why is it that when there is issues and adversity and challenges I thrive but when there's nothing I feel depressed probably because significance is a significant factor for you and you feel significant needed and wanted in those situations I don't think I'm wanted or needed you're the person to help fix the problem right they're coming to you as the solution oriented leader Correct. When everything's fine and they don't need you and everything's rolling. No, because this is my business partner. He's he doesn't need me. He he could be making decisions on his own and doing his thing. And I'm not there. I live in Dubai now, right? right. So, and I'll be like, and I could see mistakes. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Uh, but there's nothing I can do about it because I'm not. On the, how can you tell someone no, bro? That's a mistake. We got to do it this way. Well, you're not even here. You're in Dubai. I'm the one on the ground. Mm-hmm. So. It's fr- when there's frustration in my life, I, 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 I like it. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel alive. Would you say variety is a high need for you? Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. So when everything's homeostatus, status quo, everything's fine, you get bored. So when there's a disruption, it's interesting and there's an opportunity to do something different. Mm-hmm. Push yourself mentally. Mm-hmm. See, the thing is, there's a line, right? There's a... And maybe even growth, right? Variety, it could be That's gro- it. Yeah. growth. I really feel like that yeah. it's the growth part. Yeah. There's a line, right? Above the line is positivity. Below the line is negativity, yeah. right? People don't want to live on the line and not feel anything. Because when you don't feel anything, you feel dead. Mm-hmm. So people, you can either go up and be positive or you can go down and be negative. Right. That's why people choose. That's why people become depressed because, hey, yes, they've gone down, but at least they feel something. Yeah, they'd they rather be alive. down. Yeah, yeah. they f- they rather go down than be yeah. in the middle and not feel anything. Yeah. All goes back to need psychology. <laughs> so, I guess that's uh, that's that's. I think I really need to start meditating. A hundred percent. They took pictures of a woman over the course of a year, every day showed her face every day for a year while meditating and by the end of that year she looked younger wow yeah um wow yeah i mean what it does for you i'll give you another example of benefits there's so many things so many reasons but i uh was snowboarding and i fell really hard multiple times on my tailbone was it your first time? No, um, but I'm still not good, um, but not my first time. Anyway, I fell multiple times really hard, and by the time I left that trip, I had a pinched nerve. I was, it was bad. And I ended up having to do physical therapy up to three times a week because I was in so much pain. There was so much inflammation down my leg. They literally would just touch me, and it was so painful, and they're like, I'm barely touching you. I'm like, this is so bad. I went to a meditation retreat, Dispenza actually, for a week. And I remember starting that meditation retreat the first day thinking the pain was starting to hit. And I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this week. This is so, this is gonna be bad. Anyway, one of my intentions in meditation, once you get to a, you slow your brain state down to theta, you can program your, your mind, your subconscious mind to heal the body. You know, we've, there's endless studies supporting how we heal our bodies. So that's, that was my intention, one of my intentions. That week went on and I, I wasn't feeling any pain. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even think about it. It was just a non-issue. 
I got back to Miami where I was living at the time and ask me how many times I've been back to physical therapy. How many times? Zero. Why? Because I healed my body. How? In meditation, tapping into a different brain state. Think about it. We go to sleep. Where are you for eight hours of the day or however, for many hours? Where are you? What is happening? You're in a completely different realm, but completely unconscious to it, right? When you're meditating, your body is asleep, but your mind is awake and you're stepping into different planes of reality, not as deep potentially as, although people do travel, there's a, that's a whole nother conversation, but you can step in and connect to different parts, different frequencies, and in those frequencies, you're able to do things. You come out of it and you're attracting, like I mentioned with coherence healing, you're attracting synchronicities, opportunities, you're tapped in in a way that you were not before. Mm -hmm. That's why every major famous person that you've ever heard of from from Steve Jobs to like God knows Seinfeld talk about meditation being a huge factor contributing to their success. Mm -hmm. Jobs used to read the autobiography of a yogi every year once a year wow. over and over again to remind him. Yeah. Wow. Powerful. Why are these people talking about it? Because the benefits are so significant we can't fully explain it in this reality, but the evidence speaks for itself. Mm. So many people have been telling me, you know, Brian Rose. Yes. Yeah, he was on my podcast on Sunday and he yeah. told me you knew his podcast. Yeah, well, yeah. no, 100%. Um, okay, so the meditation you're gonna send me, is it a guided one where there's a voice telling me what to do? Part of the time, not the whole time, but Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Send that to me. Yeah, I will. I wanna do that. Yeah, it's great. There's so many different great ones. So. Hemi Sink from the Monroe Institute. So the CIA de declassified a whole project on meditation and this type of work from remote viewing to like, they go really deep into different brain states and the psychic abilities and things like that. So they released this, these classified documents and the Monroe Institute uses healing frequencies in a meditation to help you heal and create and do and the CIA backed this, saying mm. there's, there is evidence here that this is legit. Mm. So it's actually part of my program. I've included the Hemisync 30-minute um, frequency meditation because it's so powerful mm -hmm. and helps accelerate your results as well. Like you compound all these things that you're working on, things flow in a way that you just wouldn't have imagined before. Mm. They just happen much more easily for you, less resistance. Mm. That's the biggest thing is reducing resistance in the in the journey that we're on. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. So here are the tools to help reduce the resistance. Mm -hmm. I like to be with a, someone that has an identity. Yeah. I don't want to be with a woman that is a yes person. Right. And I will be obedient to you, and I'll massage your feet, and all my my king right. is home. I yes. want I want a female with character. Yeah. That I can banter with. Yeah. That um, I enjoy her character. Because if I don't have that, then I'll, I will never be home. Totally. But I want to run back home and spend time with her. Now, I was in a relationship for eight years. Uh, she didn't make, she didn't know anything about Korea, anything. Mm. Uh, this sounds ego. -y. I kind of taught her how to make money. I had an opportunity. I brought her in and I stepped out and she ran it. And she made a lot of money. And, um, and when she made a lot of money, she changed. Mm. And I moved to New York City to find myself. And I lived in New York City for six years after we broke up. And uh, six months. And um, I read, I, I read every book about relationships because I wanted to understand what happened. Yeah. And I read somewhere which really hit home. When a man makes money, you know this. Oh, yeah. He thinks, how can I provide for my family and my wife? When a woman makes money, she thinks I don't need a man. I don't believe in that thinking. But I experienced it. I understand. I understand that you experienced that, but I can give you many examples where the woman makes money and it's not an issue. Look, I can give you many examples of a grandma smoking cigarettes all her life but and not dying is, from cancer. the point is it's not a hard there's and fast all, rule. There's, there, yes, but there's always outliers. There are outliers, but I would say that most women want to be, women are driven by love and connection. It's a high need for us. So. It's not about the money, it's about the money made it more clear to her that she wasn't in the right relationship. Because when she grew into her, her needs changed and now she needed to be, her needs to be provided for in another way and you were not providing those needs for her. 
it doesn't mean the money was the issue. It means that her needs were not being addressed. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it that, it's such a very basic way to look at it is like the, the, it's the money. No, it's the needs. Everything comes down to your values and your needs. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Again. Because I, uh, that actually kind of makes sense. Kind of. It completely yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. My it's ego doesn't want to say completely. It's a framework for success, for relationships, for your business, for literally everything. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm reevaluating everything. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that state, I've heard, and again, many of us have heard that statement and we hold on to it like truth. It's so not true. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, so you're saying the financial backing allowed her her needs changed now that she had money she was dependent on you so her needs were at a certain level based on the fact that you provided certain things for her financially and everything mm. else now those needs are no longer the same because she's provided it for herself now how are you providing or i would imagine that the top two needs didn't no longer matched if we looked and broke it down and i'm happy to do this with you later those top two needs changed. You no longer were connected. At one point, she probably had a certainty need and you were providing certainty. And no longer a need she for her. Need she didn't need certainty. She provided it for herself. She felt yeah. empowered. Now that might have changed to like love and connection, typically high. And now she needs more variety, but maybe you weren't mm -hmm. providing variety. Maybe you weren't providing growth. Maybe you didn't make her feel significant enough. I don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, spiritually she became more needing to be con contributing, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, the wow. change was, we need to identify what that is, and now we have an answer. Yeah. Very true, because we, when we were breaking up, um, I was like, what about this, what about this? She goes, you're great, great at that, A, blah, blah, but what about, and she, it was always more things, because yeah. she's yeah. developed and, yeah. and everything. That makes me think that I don't want a woman that's not successful. Because it's not successful, how do you define success? Because financially, I want her to be able to provide for herself, I'll tell you why. Because I don't want a hostage situation where she's staying with me and doesn't like me just because I can provide. Right. Well, it doesn't mean that she doesn't like you, right? I'm sure she liked you. You're with her for six years, right? No, no, no that, that's different because we right. were together since... We were together eight years. We've known each other 12 years. We've yeah. known each other since 19. Got it. That's different. That's Understood. puppy love. So moving forward... Right? Moving forward, I would want a woman that can provide for herself just so I know that she's not there just laughing at my jokes because I'm providing for her. And something to consider right? is that I wouldn't go that aggressively on it because women are attracted to providers, right? Yes. It's an attractive quality. Yes. You don't want that to be the only quality, obviously. Yes. And if certainty is a need for her, and maybe certainty could still be a need for her for the record, even having financial independence and, and success, certainty could still be a need. And you provide certainty because you're stable, you're grounded, you're successful. She's not worried about you know certain things. So certainty is still being important. So it really, you have to be careful how you start to judge people's needs and, and where they are because you just want to match. If certainty is not a high need for you, then you don't want to be with someone that needs certainty, mm -hmm. right? We said growth was mm -hmm. definitely one of yours, right? So you need to be someone that growth is, is one of their needs. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think your second one is. What do you think it is? Um, well, something that I need in the relationship. Your need. For you to be happy. And what do you think one of your top two needs? We've, we've identified growth. What do you think the second need is? Oh, yeah. Growth is definitely up there. Uh, my second need is... I'll remind you. Variety, significance, love and connection, growth, contribution. Love and connection. Okay. Good, because most women have that as a top two need. Yeah, because when you're out in the world, uh, you know, you're, you're at war every day. <laughs> war with your staff, war with your business partners, war with other companies that are trying to take market share away from you. Right. Last thing I want is, is to go home, home to a toxic ho household. Of course. I want love and yep. connection and the office. And yep. let's order Pinkberry. Yeah, so that's it. What about you? What's yours? Mine... We said earlier, mine is variety, but I think That's I fluctuate right. between growth and variety because growth is very important to me. Mm -hmm. So I think I need to take the quiz again. Mm. Uh, and then uh, love and connection. Mm. Has to be. I mean, what's love and connection without... What's a relationship without love and connection? It's a friendship. Let me Your tell roommates. you, there are people where love and connection is not one of their top two. And 
very challenging. That's more of a business deal. That's yeah. more of a, hey, yeah. we're stronger together rather than being yeah. on our own. Yeah, but that's in general, that's their need, right? It's not a high need for them. So they operate in the world differently. But your kids don't see love. It's, keep in mind, it's still a need. It's not the driving, two driving uh -huh. forces. They, we still have all of these needs. Sure. They all are important. Sure. Right? To be truly satisfied at the highest level of achievement in life. You've got your family, you've got a great business, you've got all these things. What do people do at that level? What do they start doing? Once they hit everything cross board, what do they start doing? Contributing. They give back. Hmm. That's the need that usually people wait till the end often. Like, okay, I've got everything. Let me contribute. A great way to do it is start contributing on the way there, right? Mm -hmm. It'll help accelerate it, right? Mm -hmm. But people wait till the end to later in life to do it when they've achieved everything to contribute. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a spiritual need. Mm -hmm. What's dating like in Dubai? So I haven't had a lot of experience. However, on the few dates that I've been on... How dare you? <laughs> something that I've learned is you really do have to ask a man if he's married or not. Ooh. Yeah. Because a lot of them don't care. And I'm not getting anything out of that. I, mean, I don't want anything out of that, for the record. But that's a really important factor. Because like, they're not going to bring it up, is, yeah. is what I've come to the conclusion. If I don't ask, they're not going to tell me. Uh -huh. So that's really important, just that one note. Outside of that, I don't know, I, I feel like there, what I've seen is there's some really good men here, just from Thank a you. superficial level, that seem like they're really good quality men. Thank you. When it comes to monogamy, this is the part where I don't know that everybody's on the same page or feel very strongly about monogamy, and I'm someone who's a monogamous person, mm -hmm. so that's important to me when I get into a a relationship because like I'm looking at it as like the, you know I can we have a future together let's get to know each other and then evaluate right but um I think that there seems to be an, an idea here that it's not necessary to be with one person and the there's so much temptation here that I think it's important that you're both on the same page on this is what's important to me and like let's just be very honest and open and I haven't gotten that far yet so I'm so focused on my career right now that I'm not interested in really dating I'm waiting till 2025 to get into it but for me like I'm gonna be very careful I'll leave it at that Rolla thank you so much for coming thank on my you. podcast thank you thanks for having me Shaq I have a little gift for you I get a gift? Yeah. Oh, in, Dubai, so in Dubai, there's, uh, you can't really find good honey. It's oh. very small. It's very small. Okay. This is where I'm from. I'm from the western side of Australia, right? I love it. And uh, this is like organic honey that I brought from wow, Australia. Wow, thank you. Platinum honey. Yeah, for a platinum girl. I can't wait to try this. Thank you so right. much. You're welcome. Come back on the podcast anytime. <laughs> thank you. This has been Roller. Let's go.